In Creo Parametric, you can use ProProcess for Assemblies to document the fabrication process for your assembly models. In this video, we are going to create the production drawing for our process plan, in other words, the work instructions. In the first two videos of this series, we started off our process plan assembly and created the various different process steps for the work instructions. In the third video in this series, I created the drawing format, and the drawing format on sheet one contains a smart table that's going to list all the different steps in our process. And then starting with sheet two, we are going to document the various steps in the process. And this drawing format is going to do most of the heavy lifting for us. All right, so now that we are started off, I am going to create a brand new drawing. I will click on the new icon in my quick access toolbar. It is also the keyboard shortcut control N. And this brings up the new object dialog box. I will change the radio button from part to drawing. And then here we have the space to fill in the file name. And I'm gonna call this the AC process plan. That's good enough. I'm going to uncheck the option to use a default template. In a moment, I'll show you where a default template could be of benefit. But for now, I've only got a format to facilitate the creation of my work instructions. So everything here is good. Let's click the OK button. And now we have the default model. And I've only got one other assembly open, so that was automatically populated in this field. If this isn't the right model, you can always use the Browse button to select what you want. Then underneath Specify Template, it's automatically selected Empty as the option, but we created a drawing format, so I will choose Empty with Format. Now I will use the Browse button, and this goes to my template folder where I placed that format that I created in the previous video. Let's choose the Open button. And now everything is set up inside. Let's choose OK. And so the first thing that happens is that we get the process state dialog box. And I recommend that you choose step one as your active step because that is what will be placed on sheet two when we start out. You have a drop down list to choose the simplified rep that you want to use. Hey, I always like master rep. And then we have the explode state. Well, step one doesn't have an explode state, but it lists all the other different explode states that you have in your process plan. So this is good. Let's click the OK button. And it asks us which sheet of the format that I want to use. I do want to choose sheet one. So let's hit the check mark. And now because of the smart table on the format, it automatically extracted all the different process steps from our process plan and filled in the information. And for each step, we have the description, we have the parts that are involved in there and their quantities, and then those different values that we filled in for the time and the cost. So this looks great. In the drawing format, I had set up a third line in the smart table for the totals. Unfortunately, you cannot place the summation in the drawing format itself. I think you can do that in the drawing template, but anyhow, I'm just going to do that for these two different cells. Let me zoom out a little bit. I just want to be able to see the appropriate column headings. So to add in the summations, let's go to the table tab and then repeat region. This opens up the menu manager and inside here, where do we have it? Oh, there near the bottom, we have summation. And so first it prompts me to select a repeat region. So let's select the outer region of the nested region. And then it asks us if we want to add a summation or delete a summation. Well, I want to add one. So I'll choose that. And by the way, I'm paying close attention to the prompts that I am getting in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. In other words, using the message area to know what I should do next. I'm not memorizing the different steps. And I'm being prompted to select a report symbol for the summation. Well, first, let's take care of the time. So I will select the time value in the first cell. And now I'm going to end up creating a brand new parameter. So let's create one. I'll just call it total 
underscore time and hit the enter key. And now I'm being prompted to pick a table cell where summation is to be placed. Well, let's go to the cell down here and then left click in there. And then I'm just going to hit the middle mouse button a couple times. It's showing up as 0, 0.00, but I'm also going to select this and then go to the properties icon. Here you can see the name of the parameter, ampersand total time colon D. That D means drawing. I'm just going to take this and use the open bracket and a period and then the number two to limit this to de two decimal places. Let me also go to textile. Right now this text is much bigger than the rest of the text in the table. So let me choose the smaller value that I want and then click the OK button. And there we see our summation for the total time. Let's repeat that process for the total cost. Once again, I'll go to repeat region and then summation and then select the region. And I'm going to add another summation and let's choose the report symbol for the summation. This one will be ampersand total underscore cost and hit the enter key. Oh, by the way, I keep on making the mistake of putting ampersand in the title. Let's go back to total underscore cost, a little bit of a brain, whatever right there. And now I'm going to pick the cell where it's going to go. Let's pick this cell down here and then hit the middle mouse button a couple times to get out of the menu manager. And once again, I will select the cell. Let's go to the properties and once again, put in the brackets 0.2 and then the brackets to limit it to two decimal places and then make the font a little bit smaller and click the OK button. And so that way we have our summation for the process time and the process cost. So this is great. Sheet one is done. I am happy with it. OK, let's add in our second sheet. So I will use the plus sign down at the bottom left hand corner of the screen. You can also go to the layout tab and choose new sheet. But let's go back to the original method. Hit the plus sign. And now we have sheet two started. And if you take a look in the upper right hand corner, we had set up the single cell table or excuse me, the single cell repeat region. And it's extracting the process step. That's why I selected step one as the active step for the drawing and it filled in the description and here we have our bill of materials so that's good now let's create a drawing view that represents this so i will right mouse click and hold and choose general view and here we have the select combined state dialog box i'm not going to use a combined state let's click the ok button and now i'm being prompted for a center point for the drawing view about there is good. Now in the drawing view properties dialog box, let me select the view that I want to use. And I'm going to leave scale. Oh, let's hit the OK button. Yes, we want to apply the changes. I'm just going to leave the default sheet scale. It's a weird number over here, but I'm just going to change the overall sheet scale rather than customize it for this view. View display. And here everything is good. It is using the process step one this is a place where you can change the active step and let's go to view display no hidden line is great i will click the ok button and now we're seeing the surfaces for that view as well that's okay for now at the end i'm gonna end up cleaning up all the different layers in order to turn off those surfaces but let's go to the scale in the lower left hand corner and type in a value 0.125 and hit the enter key. The last thing I'm going to do for this sheet for now is add in some bomb balloons. Let's go to the annotate tab or excuse me, the table tab. And here we have create balloons and you could do balloons all or by view. Uh, let's just use all and then select a region and the bomb balloon comes in looks like it's attached to a surface later on i can take care of that but anyhow this is good for the first sheet for the remaining sheets 
Well, you could go back to the Layout tab and choose New Sheet and repeat that process, but my process plan has 13 different steps. I don't want to create each sheet one by one. A little faster method is to move or copy sheets rather than the New Sheet and repeat all those different steps. If you choose Move or Copy Sheets, well, now we get prompted where we want to place the sheet. I'm going to create a copy after sheet number two and then click the OK button. And now because this is a process plan assembly, I get asked to select the appropriate process step. So I will choose step two for the next sheet. And it is using the simplified rep and the explode state associated with that particular explode state. So let's click the OK button. And so now we've got sheet three and it's using uh, step two, station number two, and it's got all the different components listed and their quantities. These particular parts don't have a parameter for the description. Now I'm just going to repeat that process over and over for the remaining of the steps. So let me just do that quickly for you. Okay, so I've added in 13 steps for the 13 process steps. Everything looks good. Now I'm going to cancel out of the move or copy sheet dialog box. Hey, let's take care of our layers right now. I will go to the view tab and here is the layer tree command. I'm just going to right click on all the layers and choose to hide them. And so that cleans up the display and we can close our layer tree. And at this step, I would just start taking care of each of the sheets. So for example, in this particular case, my table ended up on top of the view. Hey, I can adjust its location. And let's also go, before I start adding in some other different balloons in here, the next thing that I will take care of is going to the Layout tab. And if you go to the Edit Overflow menu in the, sort of like the commands for Component Display and Edge Display, there's this other command here for controlling the Process Display. And this is very good to use because if you take a look at this view, it's kind of unclear as to which different components are involved in this process. Hey, let's go to this one. And so previous components, right now it's set to default. Well, I'm going to set the previous components. Let's use, which font do I want to use? Let's use a, I don't know, let's try a dash font. And then for the current components, the components in this particular step, I want to make sure that they are in a solid font. So I will click the OK button and then it prompts me what views I want to do this to. I will choose all views. And so that way now you can see that the components that were already placed in previous steps are grayed out. And so now I can go back and add in the balloons for the other different views. So for example, if I go to the table command, and then create balloons all and then I will select the repeat region and this particular one used a fab process let me go to a, another sheet and do that let's create balloons uh, excuse me the previous sheet used a fab unit which uh, is why the balloon didn't end up getting created let's do create balloons select the repeat region and we have the balloon in there and so again you can uh, repeat this process for the different sheets this is where a drawing template set up to automatically show the balloons would end up speeding up the process even more. But again, let's just go to one more sheet, do it one last time, create balloons. Oh, oh wait, this one is just a lubricate step, kind of irrelevant. Let me go to this one and create balloons, all, select the repeat region, there we go. Uh, so that way we have all the different views in here and we've got our great work instructions that show us how we can put our assembly together. And so now that the drawing is completed, hey, we can end up publishing this. You can go to file and then print and print. That's one option in order to generate this uh, set of work instructions. I'm going to cancel out of there. 
You can also go to File, Save As, and then we have the Save a Copy dialog box. And then from this drop down list, you have a variety of different options. One of the options that we have in here is saving this to a PDF. So there you have it. That's the way that you can end up generating your work instructions for your process plan created in ProProcess for Assemblies.